So one to question four, and it wants me to give the systematic name of lactic acid. Well, this is relatively easy. You've got three carbons in a row there, so it's propanoic acid, and then you've got a hydroxy group on the carbon there. So it's 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So the key thing to notice in this uh, question is uh, if it's produced by chemical synthesis, um, I will have a mixture of isomers. So I'll have both optical isomers present. Um, hopefully you can see this is optically active here because this carbon has got four different groups around it. Um, however, if I get lactic acid from the formation of sugars using bacteria, uh, the one produced by bacteria will only be present as one of the optically active isomers. So this one is quite uh, difficult. Um, it helps if you draw it out. So if you have a look, I've got a carboxylic acid and I've got an alcohol. So um, what I can do is I can form an ester from that. And it tells me it is a cyclic diester. So if you rearrange uh, like so, so obviously you need this to be opposite the, this group needs to be opposite the um, carboxylic acid because you've got an alcohol here. And so you need the carboxylic acid here to be opposite the alcohol here. So on this group, you also need the H and the CH3 like so. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to make this into a ester. So if you remove that and remove that like so, and let's draw in some lines to uh, pull this together, get rid of that one there, and then you're going to have a line there and a line there. Now, it doesn't have to look pretty. The main thing is that it actually works. So for this one, it helps if you draw your lactic acid in a slightly different way. You can see on this end, I've got an alcohol. On this group, I've got the carboxylic acid. So I can um, make a polyester from this. What would the repeat unit be? Well, the repeat unit would be like so, where you've got your, uh, you're basically cutting it off there and there because you'll obviously eliminate water when you make a polyester. So it's important to note there's two points to this question. How does PLA break down and why do the stitches dissolve? Well, PLA will break down um, because it's a polyester um, and therefore it is uh, photodegradable. The CO bond will absorb ultraviol ultraviolet radiation and hydrolyze. Um, why do the stitches dissolve? Well, obviously, once it breaks down back into lactic acid, lactic acid, which you can see up here again, will obviously form hydrogen bonds with water and therefore dissolve. Okay, so it now wants me to give you the, uh, or predict the hydrogen NMR uh, for 2 amino propan one which I've drawn in blue here. Okay, so first of all, it's in D2O, so you won't see that hydrogen joined onto the oxygen. So, and you also will not see those hydrogens joined onto the nitrogen. So you're going to see this one, this one, and this one. So really, it's just identifying um, the chemical shifts. So for your CH3, um, nothing really special about that. That's going to come in between 0.8 and 2, and it will be a doubler because it is next to this hydrogen here and it will have a relative peak intensity of three. For this one here, this is going to be between 2.3 and three because it's attached to a carbon which is directly attached to a nitrogen atom. Um, it's going to have obviously an intensity of one and it will be a multiplet because it's got five neighbors. So it'll be a six line pattern. And finally, this guy here, um, again, uh, is going to be an uh, uh, intensity of two because it's just two hydrogens. It is also going to be a doubler because his ne next neighbour has only got one hydrogen attached to it. And his chemical shift, because 
his uh, tax, so that option there will be between 3.3 and 4.2. Okay, the next question is going to ask me to identify peak one and peak two. Peak one, oh, whoopsie daisy, peak one is going to be the molecular iron. So it is going to be CH3, CH, NH2, uh, CH2OH plus. Don't forget that plus charge. How about for peak two? Well, peak two is coming in at 44. So I've lost uh, 31 from going from there to there. So really, if you um, think about 31, let's have a look. I've got uh, the oxygen and hydrogen there. That gives me 17 plus a carbon is 29 and the two hydrogens is 31. So it looks like you've lost that group there. So oh, let's... Um, Go back to that. So the peak at 44 is going to be CH3, CH, NH2 plus, like so. So moving on to uh, part B then. If you look what they're trying to do is I'm replacing the CL here with an NH2 group here. How do I do that? Well, I use ammonia... So NH3 in ethanol for that. So compound D, they told me, is not pure. That's because you can have um, multiple substitutions um, occurring. So once you formed this guy here, he can then react with more of your reactant to substitute the hydrogens on the nitrogen. So the easiest way to do it is draw your product uh, that you start with. So CH3, CH, then you've got NH2, like so. Don't worry, I'll sort it out in a minute. CH2OH. And then just remove one of your hydrogens and replace it with uh, another group that you have just uh, popped on. CH2OH, like so. Uh, so moving on to part C then. Um, it's told me this has uh, got a functional group of phenol, which is that one. What else do I have? Well, I've got a primary alcohol there, and I have got an amide group there. So if I heat this compound under reflux with HCl, I am going to undergo hydrolysis. So I am going to break your the amide bond there. So what am I going to end up with? Well, if I break that, obviously the phenol remains in touch, but that becomes a carboxylic acid. And then for the other one, you've got N. Da, 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 da. Let's do this in skeletal formula, uh, like so. Bit dodgy there, um, but you are going to actually protonate the hydrogen uh, the nitrogen rather uh, cl minus like so because you are in acidic conditions okay so last question we have got several uh isometric alcohols we're containing five carbons start off with pentan 1 ol and i can reduce uh, make this by reduction of an aldehyde what would i use i'd use nhbh sorry nabh4 so sodium bar hydride. Um, the equation for that is going to be taking, uh, I need to start off with pentanal. So uh, let's go for that. So CH3, CH2, um, 3, and then C double bond OH, and you add two square bracket H's to give you your product CH3, CH2, 3, CH2, OH. Okay, so there's a few clues here. Um, first of all, compound F is a structural isomer of um, C5H11OH. But I can convert it to compound G under reflux 
with acidified dichromate solution. And this compound G will react with 2,4-dinitrogen hydrazine, but not with tollen agents. So I know that compound G is a ketone. So that means that compound F must be a secondary alcohol. Why is that? Well, if it was a primary alcohol, if I re had taken a primary alcohol and heated it under reflux, I would have made a carboxylic acid, which would have not reacted with 2,4-dinitrophenol hydrazine. If it had been a tertiary alcohol, then no reaction would have occurred with acidified dichromate 6, because tertiary alcohols cannot be um, oxidised. So, I have got a secondary alcohol, and now I need to know which one. So, let's tackle this. So I know it's going to be a secondary alcohol, and I have got five carbons. So let's have a go. So it could be that one there, or it could be that one there. Um, any more? Well, uh, yes, it could be one, two, three your OH on there and then another CH3 like so. So those are my options. So it's quite straightforward to work out which one. How many are... Uh, um, so when I oxidize these, because this is a spectrum of G, let's do that. So I'm going to take out that H, that H, that H and give myself a double bond there, there and there. How many peaks do I have? Well, I've got one, two, three, four peaks. This one here uh, would give me five peaks because each carbon is different. There's no symmetry in there. This one would give me three peaks because those are the same, those are the same, and then him's on his own. So it can't be that one. What about this one? I'd see one, two, three, and then these two would be the same, so four peaks. So, this is going to be uh, compound G, and compound F would be the corresponding alcohol. So now I'm going to move on and identify compound H and F. So I've got a carboxylic acid, and it requires uh, this amount of sodium hydroxide to neutralise it, and it reacts with compound H in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to form compound I. So compound I is going to be an ester. The key giveaway is it's reacting with concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, compound F we know is going to be is an alcohol. Um, and I've got a carboxylic acid, and we know carboxylic acid plus alcohol gives you an ester. So that there is an ester. So now I need to work out what carboxylic acid do I have. So let's do that calculation. So the first thing I'm going to work out is the moles of sodium hydroxide that I used. Um, so that's going to be the volume times your concentration divided by a thousand. And if you do that, 0 0.00285 moles of Na. OH was used. Okay, so um, that means that would be the same as the number of moles of acid uh, because it's only got one uh, uh, carboxylic acid group. It's a one-to-one -one reaction is going to be the same. And then to work out your molar mass is going to be the mass divided by the moles which is going to be, they told me the mass was 0 0.211 divided by the moles, like so, and that equals 74. So I know that this, ac this acid has obviously got COOH in it. So if we take 74 and minus uh, 12 for the carbon, 32 for the oxygens and 1 for the hydrogen, I'm left with 29 and 29 is CH3, CH2, so you have got propanoic acid, like so. 
so that one is your carboxylic acid which is compound H and then finally compound I is going to be the ester so if you take your carboxylic acid CH3 CH2 and then C double bond O and then you're going to add in your alcohol which you've just identified as being this one here uh, like so and then you've got two CH3 groups like so and that is compound I. Okay so the final part then is I need to identify compound J. Now you will notice from the proton NMR you have got nine hydrogens in the same environment so that's nine out of eleven. Um, obviously uh, you're going to have um, one of those hydrogens is going to be um, from the OH um, and then so you've got another two so you must have a highly symmetrical alcohol here um, now you've got five carbons so if we have our CH2 there with our OH remember that this won't split the hydrogen on the oxygen does not get involved in splitting and then you obviously need to have your other carbon here attached to three methyl groups like so to give you that highly symmetrical um, NMR spectrum there with nine CH3s in the same environment then you've got two without any splitting and finally your OH down there.